In 2020, the Almeida fire swept through Southern Oregon. It devastated the towns of Phoenix and Talent, burning thousands of buildings and taking three lives. Part of the reason the fire was so destructive is that it burnt straight through the middle of the towns along the Bear Creek Greenway. Oh yeah, look at the ash sludge. Look at, yeah. That's gnarly. Seven months after the fire, Jacob Shockey and Sarah Konigsberg took us along to search the Greenway for a furry critter that may have helped slow the flames. Oh, and over here, look. Oh, there's a bunch of little teeth marks pulling the bark off. Surprise! Of course, when you think of preventing wildfires, you probably think of Smokey Bear. But we're looking for an animal that plays a much bigger role in fighting and recovering from fire, beavers. Sarah and Jacob help run a nonprofit called the Beaver Coalition. We saw this all across the Greenway where you've got these, these bank dens. Oh yeah, well look how far back it goes. They're pretty roomy if you crawl up in one, you know. They're part of a growing movement to partner with beavers to tackle big problems like fire and drought. Many folks have been coming to Beaver as we're looking at water scarcity and as we're looking at how, how do we most impactfully build resiliency into our landscape. And so the Beaver Coalition sort of grew out of that and why we exist is to empower humans to partner with beavers. If you're asking, why would humans want to partner with beavers? Well, one reason becomes clear as we look down on this beaver dam in downtown Phoenix. That's such an awesome dam. Beavers created this pond between the highway and Main Street not long before the fire, and it appears to have slowed the flames. This body of water protected this little strip. The pond might have even saved the Phoenix Civic Center. And now the dam is filtering ash from the water for salmon and other animals living downstream. Just think about how much toxic sludge is now in this pond from the fire runoff. Totally. How nasty it is there and how clean it is there right before it goes into the creek. It's like you couldn't ask for better to understand what beavers have to do with fire. First, we have to understand a little more about the animals themselves. Beavers are awkward on land, making them easy pickings for predators. But they are graceful in the water, so they build dams to create ponds and wetlands for protection. And at the center, some construct their iconic lodges. Scientists have long considered beavers to be nature's engineers because they reshape the very ecosystem around them. But recently, scientists have made a new discovery. As wildfires grow worse with climate change, these beaver wetlands can create an emerald oasis in an otherwise charred landscape. You can see it in image after image of burns in Oregon, Idaho, and California. To learn more, we met up with one of the leading scientists, Emily Fairfax, at nearby Ashland Creek. If you ask someone to imagine a healthy stream or to draw a healthy stream, what they think of often is this little thin stream winding through the landscape that's cool, it's clear, uh, and that, unfortunately, in most cases, is not what streams should be looking like. They only look that way now because European settlers trapped millions of beavers and converted their wetlands into farmland. Things used to look a lot more like this. A really healthy stream, especially in valleys, especially in sort of lowland areas, should be really messy. It should be splitting into a bunch of different directions and then coming back together. There should be so much brush and so much vegetation that it is challenging to walk through. There should be mud, there should be bugs, there should be fish, there should just be chaos uh, all around you. And that's a healthy stream. These messy beaver wetlands slow down water and irrigate valley floors as well as any farmer, even in times of drought. And when fire moves through, they act much differently than simplified streams like Bear Creek. Emily made this animation to explain what happens. So what you have is a beaver moves into the landscape and it's a pretty simplified stream, but he builds that dam. And as he builds that dam, a pond forms. 
And then from that pond, he digs those canals, spreading that water out into the landscape. And the earth around that beaver pond is like a great big sponge. It's sucking up water, um, a wetland is developing, all this you know, biodiversity is happening, it's great, it's beautiful. And then somewhere, a fire starts. And as that fire moves through the landscape and it approaches that stream, this area that the beaver has built this pond and has dug these canals is so wet, it's so soggy, uh, it's really difficult to burn that. Emily and her students have spent years poring over satellite images of beaver ponds before and after fire. These beaver dammed areas experience about three times less burning than the areas that don't have beavers. So they're significantly more protected from fire. And when fire does go through them, it's much, much lower intensity. And sometimes it can't go through them at all. It's just too wet to burn. Those wet areas also provide a safe place for other animals to hunker down in. And that's huge, especially if you think about some sensitive species where their whole habitat could be destroyed in a fire. So if beavers can create fire breaks and wildlife refuges all over the landscape for free, you'd think we'd want them everywhere. But they also flood roads and yards and cut down trees that people like. So in most western states, including the beaver state, the furry engineers are classified as nuisance animals. And there are few limits on hunting and trapping them. Such was the case for Phoenix. The last time beavers moved in, the town trapped and removed them. You know, then after that, they start coming back and I said, no, that's not going to work. So this time, Matias Mendes called Jacob to help Phoenix live with their furry neighbors. Matias, how's it going? The whole clown show's here. Matias is concerned the dam will keep growing and could eventually plug the culvert downstream and flood the road. So Jacob is going to install a pond leveler. It's a device that removes the flood risk, but lets the town keep the ecological and fire benefits of the pond. This is the cage that hides the leak, and this is what we're going to sink out in the pond. Then we run this over the beaver dam, and then it's like your bathtub drain, right? It's keeping it at that level. No, that's great, man. Jacob's nonprofit, the Beaver Coalition, has funding to install devices like this in the Rogue Basin to help humans and beavers coexist. But it means Jacob is going to have to get wet. Are you walking or swimming? Swimming. <laughs> I can barely touch. A pond leveler is basically a long pipe that runs over the dam out to the middle of the pond, where a cage stops the beaver from blocking it up. We want to hide this as far from the dam as we can because beaver will obsess over looking for that leak. And they're not thinking that it's 40 feet out in the pond. Jacob's hope is that if the beavers thrive here, they'll start to work their way back up the greenway and they'll reshape the landscape to make it more resilient to fire and drought in the future. We selfishly need the beavers' help. We don't have enough time or money or people to help bring this creek back to the place it needs to be. And beaver will do that for free. Beaver are the ecosystem engineer for this landscape. And we can play at it, but they're the professionals. So we need to defer to the professionals. <laughs>